you really can't talk about SEO for Bubble without just talking about SEO. Um, before we talk about SEO, I'm Facundo. Uh, I'm an indie hacker, ex-restaurateur, ex-vegan food manufacturer, got into Whole Foods, still in Whole Foods. We have like four restaurants on the East Coast and we sell in like six states from, from all across the Eastern seaboard. And, uh, and I left that all, I left it to my parents to become uh, a no-coder developer. And now I'm five months into fatherhood and uh, I'm, that's, that's the ultimate life hack. You know, if you want to learn how to, you want to learn how to become productive or do anything, just have a child. That's really, you know, it's the new founder trend. You know, you'll, you'll see it on Twitter, how many kids you have. And it's like, I only have one. So I'm, I'm kind of like semi-productive anyway. <laughs> Um, so our agenda today is uh, our agenda today is SEO fundamentals and implementation, and then the tools. All right, so let's go from there. You, you, I guess keep your ears out for that sound, as I may miss it, and then let me know, and I'll go let them in. All right, so part one, SEO fundamentals. I was rehearsing this and realized that it went pretty long. I will try to give it detail, but I may gloss over things. At the end of the part, I will ask, you know, oh, wait, we don't have chat. Well, maybe I'll open up the chat for a bit. If you want me to clarify things, I can clarify. The basics. People use search engines to search for things <laughs> like Google and Bing. They'll like search in best app for MVP and when they type in the input, that text is the keyword. Those are keywords. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna let these all in. And yeah, that is hard. <laughs> and as I, I point that out, like, as I know this sounds very basic, and, but we're gonna start off here because for me, it was confusing starting and started because I thought a keyword is a singular word, you know, like the word best would be a keyword, you know, and it's actually keyword and keyword phrases. Um, when you start doing the research for keyword, you're going to start that process and, and it may be confusing. It was for me. I don't know. So the next thing you need to understand is that that list of pages that comes up when you hit search is known as the search engine result pages, um, but commonly known as SERPs. So you'll see the word SERPs. I didn't know what SERPs meant, and nobody likes to call them search in the result pages, so it was kind of confusing to start out with. Um, so just getting over the basics, make sure everyone's on the same page. Now, the order that those links are flowing is the rank, starting with number one through infinity. The top 100 is like what the, at most like these like big SEO tools will talk about, and like I think in general a page like page one is like 10 results. Ten. So you want to be in the top 10, obviously. Obviously, you want to be number one, but it's tough. Okay, so before we get into SEO, kind of have to understand how Google determines you should be number one or not. And it uses a variety of different tactics in its algorithm, and that algorithm changes actually like several times a year or once a year, like it's, it's, it's a thing. So believe it or not, it uses uh, your behavior metrics it says, okay, you search for this thing, you clicked on a link, and then you were like, this site sucks, I'm off, that's your bounce rate. You went on, you found this site, you, you left it immediately, that's a bounce. So Google's like, you didn't really spend time on that site. Whatever reason, this search and this link doesn't, doesn't serve you well, doesn't serve it. So it doesn't help that. Google wants to say, hey, you search for this phrase, and we're gonna give you the best result for it. It's the first one, and it should be, so you end up staying there for a long time. So that's bounce rate. Time on site is how long you stay. So, okay, maybe you didn't bounce, you're there for a little bit, and you're like, oh, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And, or you're like, oh, this is exactly what I want. I'm here forever, I'm staying here. That's your time. How does Google know this? It can tell when you come back to the results, or if you never come back to the results. And it uses those sort of metrics um, 
to make those metrics. <laughs> Sorry. So then there's the page views, how many times people actually go into your site and look at it. Um, then there's like social shares, return to visits. Like uh, Google's kind of can has your whole internet available to itself, so it can pick up on those things subtly. Uh, I don't know how. <laughs> and then so then there's more uh, technical stuff, and then so like content updates and freshness. It's gonna be looking to see if you're like updating your blog often, or if you're creating uh, new marketing material for your landing page, and it has a way to track that and see like, oh, this is fresh. You know, every time it comes to crawl your site, it's gonna say, oh, this is the same site. Oh no, it's different. Okay, cool. They're 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 fresh. We want to promote that. Um, that it's probably gonna have value for the people that are searching. Uh, a technical term is CTR for a click through rate. That's the amount of uh, people that are, you know, clicking. That's the, the amount of people that click your result after they see it. So it pops up in the list. They, you know, you see ten results. You click the this one. That's the click through rate. How often it clicks after it's being seen. Then external links and mentions. This is known as backlinks. How like is is uh, did you write? Do you have a tool that people are writing blog posts about, and they're saying you got to use blank blank you know seoapp.com because it's the only way you're going to rank and all these blogs exist about it and they're all linking to you even cnn you know links to you like that's that's your backlink stuff though depending on the google like now tracks every domain's like authority and a site like bbc or cnn who's got a high authority if they link to you it's going to mean a lot so like if you get like a huge media push and a lot of people are linking to you okay Google's gonna notice that and they're gonna say, this site is good. You know, reputable people are passing on, they're giving you the rep, the reputation, and they're giving it, passing it on to you. Other metrics, your structured data, like kind of like the way your app is formulated and the kind of things like you can add to your site here. Um, so structured data is a very specific part of technical SEO where you can like, have you ever searched for something and all of a sudden the top, if you search for a movie, you get like a cool movie box or if you you search for recipe you get recipe cards even someone wants to join we're gonna let you join so sorry and um <laughs> i have the list here i got like articles local businesses events all those have like or like rich text snippets you can actually um google can like parse your site and create those things for you but you can actually help it out and, and create this little structured data like a looks like a json object and google will pick it up now, because you have it there, it's like incentivizing Google. Oh, this site is already doing it for me. Great! Like, let's 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 promote it. You know, and you'll see in this little case study I did, mini case study uh, that I'll show you later. You have to wait to the end. You have to stay in order to catch the real goodness. Um, you'll see what I mean. And um, but technically, you can get higher without actually ranking first. So we'll show you that in a bit. Your mobile usability, usability in general, to be honest. So they say it as a fact, like you want your, your site should be accessible and functional no matter what platform you're using. And, you know, Google is not like, I mean, Google is looking at your site structure and saying like, does this make sense? But also it's like, if, you, if a user goes to your mobile site and it's broken or the things don't work, the buttons are out of order, or they have to scroll into the page just to like find it, it means they're taking more time or less time or they get frustrated, they don't interact with it. All these things become signals to Google, like, mm, maybe not good, maybe not the best site. This other site doesn't have this problem, let's rank them higher. And that, that results to our site health and speed. So it's the same thing. If you have to wait a long time to get to a site, you have a high chance that your visitors or you will not stay there, you'll leave. Again, in the case study, I'll show you. Site health, uh, yeah, so next. Where are we? 13, 13 minutes in, oh my God. <laughs> Still in part one. Uh, so SEO, what is it? Search engine optimization. Well, I go. I bet nobody knew that. Um, but one one sentence. It makes your website, web app, uh, rank higher in the SERPs. That's it. It's about optimizing your site to rank higher. Um, it's not something crazy. It's de like, let's demystify it. You know, let's let's do that. Uh, see through the fog. Okay, so the, there's some basic techniques. There's your content, I mentioned about keeping that fresh, the technical SEO, that's things that bubbles and allow you to control, that you can control as developers for your clients. Um, that's gonna be like pretty much the bread and butter, like the main topic of this discussion. 
SEO is a giant, giant community slash world slash career slash passion slash artistry. Like you can be an SEO artist and and um, that's where we get into like other strategies. We're not going there. That's that's not that's out of the scope of this. So user experience, you can control that. Your site can load fresh. You can have good navigation. That's in your control. And the backlinks, that goes a little bit more of the SEO like marketing stuff, but it's important to understand how they work technically. So that's why I have it here. Okay, all right. And beyond, that's what I meant by that. Okay, so I don't need SEO, I'm building an app. I know, I know, I heard it a hundred times before. Um, you may have this single page app and um, yeah, and you, on your app page, you know, and, and but you're gonna have a landing page, you're gonna have promotional pages, you're gonna have blogs, you're gonna have FAQs, you're gonna have, maybe you have forums, you know, like who knows, you can do anything with Bubble. Documentation, if you're trying to make money, all these things help you and your product rank higher. So, yeah, your product may be cool, but if it's not making money, that product's gonna fail. Like, you know, that's the thing. And you're gonna find that it's, it's hard. So, your clients are gonna come back to you and say, hey, you know, like, I need this now, I need this now, and it has nothing to do with the product, you know? And, and besides that, it's a value add. You know, as an agency, as a developer, like, listen, I'm gonna build your product for you, you want this, it's an MVP, but we can do these small things. We'll build the documentation, we'll build the FAQ section, and, and it's small ads that you can do to, to the site that'll instantly like kind of bolster its SEO presence. It won't, it won't, the results won't be instant. It takes time for Google to see it, you know, and people have to actually use the site just because it exists. Doesn't mean they'll come, you know, it has, they actually have to visit for that to work. But if you don't have it, then there's no point. There's even a case to be made that an app, <laughs> even the app itself, the single page app, uh, can be help you with your ranking. I have an idea, I don't, I think I've seen it different places, but you can, like some people offer free tools and even your app could be in free mode, free trial mode. You can turn that into marketing. You know, if someone goes to the free tool or even to like the just non-logged in state, you could show marketing material. You could say, hey, this is the, section of the site where we parse your HTML and we figure out what's your SEO problems and, and we're gonna, and, and this is what happens here. And if you click all these buttons, this is what's gonna happen. Just sort of like a guide. You're getting people into your site, in your UI, and they're like engaging with your site. That's good, that's great, because now you have all these links like learn more here, learn more there. Oh, buy now. You're forcing people to like go to your site and click. Then they're gonna click something else. And all that will be like, add up to like, oh, they came to the site through Google and then they stayed there for like 15 minutes. They went back to Google and then they turned Google off. Google's like, oh, that app was great. They even came back to Google and said nothing was value. That's the one we want. So like, these things are important. This is like, I don't see people doing this. I'm not sure, I haven't pro like proven this. I'm not, again, I'm not an SEO artist, but I have a feeling that's like a, a cool strategy that could be implemented. If you're on time crunch MVP status, like I don't think that's the right way to go. This is like heavy planning, understanding what you're gonna do and, and have, maybe having a several developers because uh, this is an extra thing to do. But Okay, the exception is internal tools. Like if you got a bunch of employees or if this is a company app, you know, there's no reason it's gonna be on the search engine, then yeah, don't worry about it. Don't waste your time. Don't, don't waste the client's money. Like that's, that's, that doesn't make any sense. You know, for, for real, there is definitely a reason for that. Even Bubble says it on their app. So, so don't, don't worry about it. Um, I mean, it's good to understand. Maybe if you, you know, just to know like in the future, will this matter? But yeah, you know, an admin page doesn't need to worry about it. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm cruising. We're cruising. Um, I wonder. Oh, did I miss a page? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, um, part two, implementation. I think I need to slow it down. I have like a, like a fast voice. Um, let's see here. Okay, so, oh, let me get out. I've been looking at this, this beautiful mirror effect here. Um, let's, let's get into some action. So, uh, bubble, bubble settings. 
bubble implementation. We're gonna like see this. This is how we do SEO in Bubble. You go to settings, and you go to SEO. Whoa, mind blown. You start filling out all these things. Your social media and open graph settings. I'll get that to that in a minute. Let's start with the SEO settings first. I created this little site called How to Bubble for demo purposes, and I even bought the domain just to have fun. Um, and don't go to it because it, don't, it won't make sense. Um, but for this demo, I have everything perfectly. So our first thing is exposed type tags or text elements. What are HTML tags? I'm just gonna do this real quick because I don't know if everybody knows this. And I, you know, I'm hoping they do, but it's okay if you don't. Tags are what enclose um, a body of uh, like HTML code. Um, I'm sure someone out there is like has who's like into hypertext media is like knows exactly how to explain this, but it's basically like the quotes around the content that um, HTML lives in. So basically, it's like HTML is a tag, head is a tag, body is a tag. Script tag. These are script tags, image tags, div tag. And then you have the h1, h2, h3, h4, h5, h6. And you have the p tag. And then you have all. They're all tags. These are attributes. Length, class, style. So those are the attributes for that class. That's basic HTML. And, um, and what each one does, you can spend your own time going down. We're going to talk about the ones that relate to SEO right now. As many as we can, to be honest, there's, there's, there's a lot. We have to worry about, right now, the first thing that we can worry about is the text tag. So when we, when we click this button, uh, we get, you know, many of you, many experienced de uh, developers, uh, bubblers already are familiar with this. Um, let's see here. Oh, I'll just, um, I'll do it on the homepage. We have a text element. Drag it on. You right here. You'll see you can change the H2 or the 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 H like the text tag, the heading tag. H stands for heading. When it's on normal, it's div. So I would I thought that maybe they would say like paragraph tag, but it's it's a div, just a normal div. And a div by itself, without any attributes on it, it's just like uh, an invisible wrapper, really. Like the the crawlers just gloss over it, so it doesn't. It's it, when you look at the code, it's all this stuff there, but for the crawlers, it doesn't really matter. So I think that's why they did that. Um, the important thing to understand about h tags is the order um, and the h1. So let's talk about the h1 here. I have here the one and only h1. The reason I say that is because um, it's some, the algorithm, and maybe it's changed, but the algorithm picks up the H1. Like classical um, web development, and I say classical at this point because it's like we're, we're ancient now, is that, you know, articles were, pages were articles, and they, they were just content. It was just like like a, like a newspaper, essentially, and it had like the heading of the, of the article, and then it had maybe a table of contents, and then heading for the paragraph for that section and then it had the actual paragraph and so that's where these like eight headings came from and so if your article was called you know how to no code you would give that the h1 um tag it doesn't make sense to have an h1 again you know like how do you, it's this page is for how to no code even if you have another article on that page if you put another H1, you're just essentially confusing Google or the crawler. And I'm sorry, I haven't defined crawler yet. Crawler is like a, a robot a program designed by these search engines to like search the web in their own uh, tooling. And they just they just crawl through the internet and, and read each site's HTML and, and parse out the things they need in order to deliver uh, and determine if this, this site should be searchable. Okay, so I'll come back to that. Um, so, and I lost track. H1, H1, okay. So, it doesn't make sense to have multiple H1s. 
Now, what if your site doesn't have an article? You know, like this, I'm, this isn't an article, this is just my landing page. You can use your site name for that. Like if you go to apple.com, Apple doesn't have an article. They actually have a H1 tag that just says Apple. And it's invisible, they don't even have it on the screen. If you go to apple.com, I'm pretty sure it's just an Apple logo. They don't even show the word Apple. So, but they had to do it because it's something that the algorithms are looking for. Just remember, like, it's one or the other. Don't use multiple ones. So, and, or page title. So maybe the landing page is like your company name and then you could use like your page title for the other ones. Like, like blog, right? There's not a, there's not a, there's a bunch of articles on blog, you know, that link to the actual post, but this is the blog page. So, um, you can just write, H1 could be blog and it could be hidden. Okay, so use for structuring your content, right. And so the next thing to consider is if you are doing a blog, let's go to our post page here. It's super simple, please don't hold it against me. Um, we have our title, H1, and we have our body, I have it as normal. Now, if I wanted to put a heading here above this, I would give it an H2. Most of you, I think, already know this, but I'm just going over it just for, for you know, completeness. Um, the, the thing that's important here to keep track of is don't put now, you know, now maybe you'll do like another subheading, H3, but don't put now another H2 after you put an H3. You know, once you go down, you got to go back up. Just structurally, it's, you're going deeper and deeper. One, two, three. Then if you go into, once you go like, once you're done this section, you're gonna go back to the bigger section, two. You're not gonna go one, five, three, two. It doesn't make sense. And Google will have confusion. You're like, why? You know, it should be, it should make sense to them. They're gonna kind of like paint a picture based on these tags. So that's, you're kind of defining the structure of the app just with these tags alone. And there's a lot of other ones you can use, but right now you only have access to this in bulk. So that's fine. Okay. So our next setting, we have SEO meta tags, where are we? Okay. Point URLs to primary domain as better SEO. Well, let's just do it, right? <laughs> it sounds like it's great. Better SEO, let's just do it. Okay, thanks, Bubble. What is that? What is that even doing? Like, just point them. It's a canonical URL. If you go through their documentation, you can find that out and you realize that's happening. Now, why did I have it unchecked? Should you have it unchecked? It depends. It depends. Let's start off talking about what canonical URLs are first, and then finally we'll talk about whether you should have it clicked or not. Let me see, just want to read what I wrote here. Make sure any alternate or secondary URLs for the same page kind of give you credit slash juice to the primary URL. Um, so it's possible that you have multiple sites or multiple URLs going to the same content or the same site, essentially, or the same page, but different URLs. And that can happen for a variety of reasons. I highly recommend going to Google's SEO page. I will point that at the end. But it could be like you have uh, your your different um, like a subdomain or, or you know, like the www version and the non www version. So now you have you know both of those are correct links, but they both and they both go to the same page, but they're different URLs. What you don't want to happen is bubble to to pick up, to be crawling the web and finding like your, your example.com domain link and say, oh, okay, great, this is a great site. Everything's amazing about it, let's rank it. Boom, I think this is like a number five. Look how many people are picking at it, or are clicking on it. And then they find the www one and then like, oh, this one's good too. Oh, well, we should rank it, you know? You don't want that to happen because basically it's the same. So now you, like, you, had, you have two sites ranking when it really should just be one because this the same site that's your own is like taking away the the juice the credit to the first one so what do you do because you don't really want to have to get rid of that www one now in the case of the www one we do 
you do the redirect in your DNS, you know, when you, a lot of you set those settings, that ha if you do a custom, your, a custom domain in Google, they're going to give you two, um, uh, what's it called? IP addresses, and one is gonna, it's gonna happen at the, at the top, at the DNS level. So you don't have to worry about that one, probably, but it can still happen for, maybe you have a .net and a .com, or a .com and a .org, and they go to the same place. That's, I've seen it before. You may even have an e-commerce store that has um, uh, like a product and an item, and then like green as like a path. But also you have a product item and you have a way to filter it. And so using parameters like like uh, up here we have like our, our page parameter, ID, how to bubble, tab, six. This is a URL and this URL is indexable. And so what we want is this, this URL that has the, that's using the parameter, like, so, like color green instead of the path green, which both go to the same page. We want that second URL to go to, to show like, hey, I'm not the main one. The people use me because like it allows me to like allows the, the a lot of filters to be occurring a lot, and you can use a lot of filters in your parameters. But but I'm not the main one. When I want when I want it to appear in Google, I want this one to appear, the one that has a nice pretty URL. You know, whatever your reasoning, that's what a canonical URL is, and that 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 message that head that like hey use me for this goes on that secondary page. This this code link. Relationship canonical. Go to the this beautiful link one, not the one with all the parameters. And and Google will say, oh, okay. Anybody that clicks here, we're gonna give the juice to the original one. I hope that makes sense. I'm not getting all the feedback. I'm not seeing the clicky clicks or the expressions, but I hope that's clear. Um. So now you know why. And it's, it can be, depending on what you're, you know, who you're developing for, it can be a, an important thing. Um, bubble, when you turn this on, Blanket will now, will now add this code to every page. The thing about that is I think you, can, you should use it if, you, if your concern is having like a rogue um, site like like a www or a .net or .com, like which one do you want to be your main? I think that use it for that. If you're doing e-commerce and you're having like you know a bunch of different folders and paths, multiple different domain endings going to the same page, you might want to consider doing it yourself. And. The reason is that Google doesn't know what page. You know, I mean, Bubble doesn't know which page. You know, you're, you're you know, just because it has it. You know, how, how does Bubble know that this ending goes to the right? What's the right URL? You know, you kind of had to tell Bubble this is the right URL, and and I kind of tested this out myself, and um, it happened with specifically in the scenario where I it's, I'm using like. Um, uh, a, a, a domain proxy, a DNS proxy, and I have a certain domain, like how to bubble, going to my my bubble, um, like the 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 non custom domain. See, I don't have a custom domain set up right now, but if we go to how to bubble to come, we do see the site here. Uh, it's powered by Coelius. They're the sponsor of this whole day, but that has nothing to do with like they did not sponsor me. I am a paying customer. Just coincidence. Uh, but I'm using this for this feature right now. And um, so what happens is if we, let's see if we can, if I can uh, real quick to show this. If I type in canonical, um, we get this one, hrefhowtobubble.com. Now, the, the one that, that um, bubble will put in will be the one that says, Let's see here, I can show you. It's gonna have this URL, how to bubble 54858 bubblelabs.io. That's the domain it's gonna say is the canonical one. The problem is that's not the canonical one. So if for some reason that site gets indexed, which it, it could for a variety of reasons, then you have two links go, like going on the, on the Google. 
Now, that's a particular scenario where I'm using Coelius and, 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 I'm, and I'm using special things. If you are using this feature, the domain feature, you're likely okay. Now, the only thing to remember is if you're doing like something specific with, with crazy like uh, URL parameters, men, it's worth just checking. So it's worth just going to your site, you know, going to the site that, where you have like potentially two different sites going to the same content. And, and keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the exact same content. It could just be very, very similar. So maybe there's like a slightly different page for someone who's logged in or something. And maybe that both of those links are like visible to the to Google, you'll you will want to say like, yeah, don't if people go to this one, give credit to the other one. So there's a lot of reasons. And I'll I'll show you the resources later at the end on how to determine if it's worth it. Um, so I get I get sidetracked here. Oof. Okay. Canonical. So much of my time. Thank you for that. I hope this makes sense. Hope this isn't crazy. Um, it is something to understand. Okay, the just leave. You can you can turn it on. I think I just it's just let me uh, let me just summarize. You can turn it on if you're using the basic domain settings. Just go into here. Go to your, once you're loaded. Do a command F. Type in canonical and find it. You really want to make sure there's only one. If you have more than one, Google's just going to ignore it, both of them, and it's going to say it's going to guess. It's going to say, oh, this one seems like it's the right one. It may be right, but it may not be. So. You just have to keep track of that, you know. That's as a developer. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be something that you do often or a lot. But once, a, and you will know it based on the circumstance. Okay, enough. Okay, then we have the robots.txt and the sitemap file. Um, so I'm going out of order here because we have. Oh no, I, I changed the order already. Just remember from my from planning. But we have robots.txt and then our exposed site file. Now, why would you want to customize the robots.txt file? This, the site file, the robots determines if a search engine can crawl your site. So you can, there's, and Google has many crawlers. They have like the main crawler for their web, they had the news crawler, and they have like uh, I don't know, forget. But they have a couple. So maybe you like you have a news site, and you don't want your site to be crawled by just Google's normal one. You just want it to be indexed for for its for the news that you have. So here in your in your file, you would write you know, you'd have user agent, uh, Google bot, something. Uh, news. I, I don't remember what it is, um, but you can just search for what it, you can do that, and this will tell this will tell any search search that's coming to crawl your site. Oh, uh, yeah, that's me. Okay, don't crawl version test. That's what's happening right now. If I do this, don't crawl anything. You know, if I say allow, now we're saying crawl everything. So. With the star, we're saying everybody can call anything but version test. Now, this is the default. Every site on Bubble starts with this. You know, so if you if you leave it unexposed, basically this is what you get. So you don't have to do anything. It's basically saying, hey, don't crawl the version, the test version. You know, it's not it's not real. It's the, you know it's not deployed. We don't want that showing up on on the uh, in the on the index. The index being Google's rankings. Now, but here I'm saying it can still be indexable. So what's the deal? Why did why did Bubble do this? I don't know. Maybe because there are some sites like uh, like plugins that use version tests domains as their main domain. So they really didn't want people to like stop it from being indexing. So I think this is a good maybe this is a good call on theirs on them. But the point, but this actually doesn't prevent your site from being indexed. It only prevents your site from being crawled. Um, so, well, how does it not prevent it from being indexed? Well, let's say someone else finds your plugin site or, or your the version test of your site by accident. You send a link, and you send the version test link, and now it got shared, it blew up, and now everyone's using your test version. 
it, and they put it on their site, and now somebody, and now the, the, another crawler goes to this other guy's site that has your test link on it, Google's crawling that page, and they're gonna come across this link and say, oh, this, this is a site, I gotta find it, you know, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna investigate it, and then boom, oh, this is a good site, I have it, I'm indexing it, I'm putting it on my thing, it's well-structured, all this stuff, and boom, now you're in Google. Now somebody searches your thing, and version test pops up. So you're like, what the heck, you know, what do I do? So that's why we have, um, we have a specific way to uh, modify that, and that's with a no index meta tag. So I'll get to that in, when we get to meta tags. But just be aware that this is, does not necessarily prevent Google from indexing your, um, your site. Now, okay, what, what, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. I'm, it's so exciting, <laughs> it's so exciting. Uh, remind me, uh, I'll remind myself. Why don't we just do both? Okay, all right, so expose a sitemap file. So your next thing is sitemap. Let's, let's uh, you know, by default, none of these are clicked. I don't know why, this could be on, I don't see what's wrong with this being on. You know, it doesn't hurt anything, it's one line of code. This doesn't need to be on. You could by accidentally delete this and that would be bad. So this is a good call from Bubble. Uh, supposing you saw that file, I don't see why you wouldn't want to do this, you know? So basically I'm turning on my homepage, the blog, the fact, FAQ, sorry, and the post. Um, I don't need my, my password page indexed. A 404 four page, um, regardless, won't be indexed, but you can leave it on click. If, if, if uh, Google receives a 404 HTTP response, they're, gonna, they're not gonna index it, period. So this doesn't really do anything, but, but it's, it's cool that it's there. Um, so, okay, so why do we have it? Um, we are basically, um, we're telling Google, we're telling the search engines, like, hey, these are all the, the, the sites. These are all my sites. You know, these are all my, my URLs. These are all my things. And and because Google doesn't necessarily know what you want, you know, you may have a site that posts links for people. And and Google goes, comes to your page, it gets the HTML. It doesn't like see what you see. It sort of like gets the HTML and says, oh, here's a link, here's a link, here's a link. And these four links are your navigation. But these other ones, are just like links that you posted for someone else. Google doesn't know like, oh, this this isn't your also your site, you know? I mean, you can tell the domain's different, but, and it does, it is smart enough to like start making an adjustment, but it's good to tell Google the, like the truth, you know? And so um, that's how, you know, Google uses the sitemap to, to, to make those like nice when you, when you search a site and then you get all the sub pages below, that's, it uses the sitemap to do that. So that's important for like that reason. Now, um, if you, regardless, if okay, so let's let's take a look at these files. Like, what does it actually mean? Expose side map, you know, and, and the robots that text. What what are they? Where are they? So, if we go to how to bubble, we nothing happens. If I go to how to blog, nothing happens. Okay, let me go to here. We go how to bubble.com slash robots.txt. That's all you do. You just have to type in robots.txt. You can you can test it on your on all your your domains, and this should pop up, and it's the exact file. Now, oh, 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 there's a sitemap thing here. What the hell? I didn't add that in. You know, like that wasn't that wasn't here. You know, I mean, wait, 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 wait. Oh, it wasn't there. That happens as soon as you click expose the sitemap file. Bubble automatically puts that into your um, your robots.txt file. It's important to know, like, it's good to know what's going on. What, what's Bubble doing, you know? Cause they didn't say, hey, we're gonna automatically put it in your robots. They just said expose it. Okay, you know, it's not clear. Why, is, but why should you know? Because you may want to do that yourself. You may want to say, hey, you know, here is, here's the link to my sitemap, you know? And if we go like this and go like that and Hit save. Oh God, that's not how you save in Bubble. <laughs> Let's see, I'm gonna deploy the live. I think this is gonna bite me in the end because I, I kind of had this whole thing set up, but I 
kind of want to just be able to show like things in live. So let's see what happens here. If I do this, I hit refresh, boom. See, bubble added it twice. Now you may want to have your uh, site map at a different location. Probably not, but you may. Um, or you may have a different domain, like you may have that other domain set up. Again, it's just like, you just need to know. So you don't have two things happening here. Okay, can't delete that. So return to the editor. I'm gonna come back here, delete that. I don't need that because Bubble's doing it automatically. And yeah, so I guess like if you're gonna do it yourself, and there are reasons to do it yourself, which we'll get into, um, then you don't wanna expose it here. You know, if you're gonna do it yourself, just have the link once, there's no confusion, and you can manage your sitemap file manually. So for the most people, this is gonna be okay, especially because of the next thing. Google automatically will generate your, not Google, oh my God, oh my God, how do I go back? Oh my God, guys, guys, too many. Okay, how am I doing on time? Oh my God, it's 45, we gotta hurry up, we gotta hurry up, but Bubble automatically creates sitemap uh, for your, like, um, your, for your like blog post, like if you, for, for any page that has a, like a type of data. So we're going to our, our post page and this page, let's see here, uh, page post, has a type of post, content is post. So now if we go to, oh uh, no, I thought so. Uh, our blog, we see we have these two places and we see if we hit the first post, we get our um, our first post here, and I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Uh, okay, now if I go to my sitemap file, so like once you, this is your robot, robots file, now I want to get this link right here, boom, copy it, boom, paste it, boom, I get all my uh, pages that are in my sitemap. Oh, you have an index page, a blog page, FAQ page, and a post. That's the things I selected. But the post page has Post like there's like actual posts with like uh, what's it called uh, slugs that you created very important. Um, if you go to if you follow that link, you can see that Bubble's automatically creating a sitemap for each one of your posts. First thing I went through my head was, whoa, how many breaking links can there be in a sitemap? Uh, like fifty thousand, and if you go over that, they'll just make another file. So instead of saying so right here, it'll be like. Sitemap post one, sitemap post two, sitemap post three. It's like, it'll have like multiple different things. So don't have to worry about that. I mean, good to know. Definitely good to know. If you're at 50,000 like posts and you want them all to be indexed because you're like killing it, you may want to make sure like, hey, is, I have 60,000 or, you know, is, how is my sitemap looking? You know, it's important. And is it, is it being updated? Like what about, what if I deleted this post? Is this being deleted here? Because I don't want... Google to think that this page exists when I deleted this post, it's gone, you know? It's important to understand. All right, let's go back. I gotta hurry this up. There's just so much to talk about. And, and I'm trying to keep it focused on bubble here. Let's see. So that is understanding. <laughs> That's that, So like for that reason alone, it's worth having to using Google, I mean, Bubble's version of so exposing a sitemap, it does that for you automatically. Now there are plugins that let you do that. And if you, so if you have a scenario where you may be using like subfolders, you know, like a post, and then you may have like a blog slash, you know, uh, personal or blog slash business, something, and then you have the ID after that, you can't do that with Bubble, right? Like I'm pretty sure, you know, the, the page can have a content that that dynamic creation of the next of like of the URL won't happen. It has to happen on the on the page level, on this page level. So, I, I mean, maybe there's a workaround. You know, but anybody, you know, the people out there are nuts. They do crazy things in Bubble, and so, but you can get a plugin of some sort and and you know generate your sitemap based on like everything that you do, maybe for even for e-commerce, you know, it makes sense where you have like a category and that has an ID and you want that to be indexed because the category page is its own page, but then there's the product page of that and then there's the item and each one of those pages should be their own like marketing site. So it makes sense. It's possible. 
just good to understand. All right, let's let's keep going. So the script meta tag settings head. All right, now we're back to this fun thing that I was mentioning earlier. We have, oh yeah, we have this. We're like, okay, I just disallowed it. Nobody can crawl my site. If they can't crawl my site, how are they gonna index it? I explained it to you already. They can find it through another page. So how do you control that? Like, I really don't want my page to be on Google. Boom, meta, name, robots, context, no index. That's it. You put that in your head tag. Now, don't put that here. That's gonna tell Google the whole site is don't index it. You're gonna say, okay, for my reset password page, I'm gonna copy this. Oh man, that's not how that works. I'm gonna type it, I'm gonna go to page HTML header and I'm gonna write right here, meta. I'm not gonna do it because I have no time. But meta name robots, boom, 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 boom. And that'll appear on that page. If Google comes to this page for whatever reason, it's not gonna index it. I'm not gonna take up any credit. You have nothing going on. Unless you like decide to make your reset password page really cool and trendy and like and fun and, and like leads people to some place and I don't know, maybe it's a game. I don't know, maybe you want it to be indexed, go ahead, don't put that on there, you know. But who knows? I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, I hope everyone finds me funny because like I'm just not gonna stop. <laughs> um, we had the other okay, oh, so the important was well, why don't I just have this on all my sites, right? Like, and it's important to understand that if you put no crawl, and then you and then you have, if you put the site, no crawl, whereas if you put your site into your robot.txt, and you say, you know, disallow um, my login page, or disallow my reset password page, then what you're saying is that at, to Google is that it's possible for this page to be indexed because this doesn't mean don't index it, it means don't crawl it. And so even if you have your meta robots, robots you know, no index on your site, it can still be indexed. And that's coming straight from Bubble. Um, and so, I'm not Bubble, Google. Why do they have to have the same sound? That's, uh, Straight from Google. Um, so the point is you can't choose one or the other. And, oh man, there's so much. There's no, oh my God, it's died nine minutes. Basically, if you have like 50,000 pages, you have to be concerned about a crawl budget. You probably don't have to do that if you're on Bubble, but it's important. That's why uh, you don't just dis like, you don't just use robot.txt on every page because you, that means that uh, a page will be crawled. And, like it costs money and resources for Google to like to to just like crawl the world wide web, and so if you want more resources to be going to the pages that you want actually indexed, you have to tell Google, hey, don't crawl these pages. Don't even waste your time with these pages. Just crawl these guys. You know, these guys are the ones I want you to crawl, and and that happens when you have a lot of sites that just don't really you don't want to have on Google. That's that with with that last statement, you understand why. Robot text exists and why this no index exists and how they work together. For me, that was kind of hard to put piece, and now um, I, I hope it was clear to you guys. Whew. Okay, meta tags. I'm gonna go over this quickly. This is kind of people can understand this. I think this is that link that you share with somebody and it shows up like the title um, uh, in like the in the snippet and the image. That's, I think this is pretty clear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna gloss over that real quick. Um, you, there's a ton of them. There's like ton for Twitter, ton for Facebook. Like there's a variety. I, um, you, what you wanna do is make sure you go in and then like look, just look for yourself. See, we got this, uh, this we got this beta tag for OG title, for the open graph title, the Twitter title. We have this URL type, it's a website. You just want to go in and see if they're there, and then go ahead and, and search like types of meta tags, and see if you need to have that on your site, and then like just put it in there, just put it in the tag. Make sure that if it's for if it's site wide, you can put it in your in your um, meta tags section, or if it's on a page, you put it on the page level, like I was doing down here. Structured data. I want to get into this because it's so cool. You so let's say you have a product, you have a product page and you want it to come up on the top of Google like really fun, oh, I still have to do the, oh, the case, case study, okay. You use structured data, we're skipping over it. 
but that's how you do it. You can Google it, and it's that's it. Okay, link buttons. Oh my God, speed run bu bubble SEO. Okay, if you have links that you want pick up that you want Google to crawl and pick up and say, okay, you know, tr like this is part, like we should track this. Um, use links. It's gonna look. It's it's bubble. Google is not gonna be able to use. I have it. Uh, I have it here. Oh my God. Speed run, speed run. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. Okay, inspect, inspect. I made the example here. Most of you know this already, but this is a button, and then this is the element tag. Hey, this is a link. This is the link but, uh, uh, element. This is the uh, the button one. So because we have this um, link tag, which is the a tag, we have this. Uh, we can add the href, which is the URL that this is linking to. And Bubble can now see, like, okay, this is a link going to here. We can follow it and knows that this is something to, to keep track of. So, when it crawls. Now, um, styling link elements, there's a variety of ways to do it. So, you know, this these two things look exactly the same. You're going to say, wow, how'd you do that? Um, I put a button there and I put the link tag. The, the, the link tag, you know, Bubble's, I mean, not Google's not actually going to click the link. I mean, they will kind of in a way, but they're not going to click it with a mouse. So I put a button here, and then I put the link tag right behind it. I don't even need to click the A tag. I don't need to worry about it. I just need to say that it exists and that how it works. And and Bubbles, oh, Google is going to figure it out. <laughs> uh, Mark has no follow. Um, you know, if people are posting links to your site, you know, like through the comment section, maybe they're posting weird things. Maybe you don't want to say, hey, look, my site links to you know that weirdo site over there. So. You want to say like any link that a cut that a uh, uh, user posts to my site, just make it no follow. They can't edit the HTML code. They're gonna say, okay, here's my link, you know, that I like to share, and then you're gonna say that's no follow. So you can control which, you know, how much of your juice, you know, hey, I'm a reputable source. I don't want all my juice to go to this weirdo site. I wanted to go to like the sites I want to control, you know, and. Um, and then you can just use a button for everything else. Like this back button, it's a back button. It's just a regular button. Okay, images, alternate text, important, important. Um, you will get, you will be notified if you're not having alternate text. It's so easy to do. So if you're not doing it, it's just, uh, there's no reason for that. Oh my God, speed run, four minutes. If you guys want to hang on, oh, you can't, we have another meeting. Oh my God, I'll have to do like a version two. <laughs> um, I'll, 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 you can leave and I'll keep recording. I'll keep recording. Please leave and, and give give credit to the next guy. I'll keep recording, and um, you can see it in the rest of the recording. Okay, I promise. So thank you guys for coming. I'm gonna say that. Thank you so much. I'll do the case study in a minute. It's it's the coolest thing, um, and um, and I'll do it. Yeah. So this I don't want to skip over anything. You know, uh, I'll t I'll text. Let's go over. Let's go quick to the uh, you know, the post post post. It's so easy. So I just. <gasps> When, you, when you're nervous, you just do things too fast. Okay, there it is, post. You go to your image and alt text. I just put generic po photo post, but you can make it dynamic so that it's like, you know, when they, when they enter in their uh, post and they say, okay, what's the alternate text for this image? Boom, and it's so easy. Okay, just make sure you do that so that, at least try, so then Google, Google knows, like, oh, they're trying, you know. Um, okay, there's more to do about optimization of images. Um, Flusk made a great thing. It's in my notes. Uh, you can follow that. Oh, three minutes. Okay, HTML great for complete control. So I, right here, I have an HTML tag, and I'm and I'm using this uh, trick that I saw from Flusk about um, you can you know send these parameters to Imgix, which is the image processor Google Bubble uses. And uh, one of the I'll make it real quick. This is awesome. If you use Article Compress, which is what it already has, and then you say FM AVIF. AVIF is like the, the most is the most like compressed version, but that you can use. So you'll save the most space. And if you use it in conjunction with AltCompress, if like someone uploads a GIF, it'll it will not use AVIF and it will use the GIF. So I think this is the best approach. Obviously, like it's worth like checking with different images to see like that that your site uses. But for me, if you upload upload a JPEG or a PNG, this will convert it to uh, AVIF. And with the auto compress feature, we'll automatically show like the right one you need for when you need it. Uh, that's cool. And it's like the savings are like a ton, a ton, a ton. So talk about page, page speed for your, oh, two minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. Okay, part three. Yeah, I, yeah, let's just do it. There's, there's more to say, but let's just go into part two. Okay, 
Um, yeah, actually, these are the tools. I could go, I don't need to go in there. To stay, to stay with Bubble while I have two minutes left. Um, so let's just show some things. Let's do this case study real, real, real quick. So actually, it makes sense. We have Lighthouse. Everybody has Lighthouse right now. If you haven't used it, you can use it. Just go to your Bubble tools, you know, hit right, click, inspect, boom. And then click these two arrows and then click Lighthouse. Once you're here, you can just run a report uh, or, hit, or um, yeah, and, um, and it'll run, it'll give you this cool score, your performance, accessibility, your best part of SEO. Now, here's what I did, bubble for beginners. Okay, that's where I searched real quick and I got all these courses and these videos and then I got all these links. I'm skipping the bubble one and got bubble. So I opened up the first few that came up and we have uh, building with bubble, Coach No Code Apps, and, our, and we got Amelie, we got Peter Amelie. Oh, oh. <laughs> now, this is the order that they appeared in the, in the results. For beginners, the keywords, we got keywords for beginners, not even the keyword, oh, maybe it's, on, maybe it's on behind this thing. For beginners and for beginners. So the beginners keyword is working for them. It's everywhere and it's, it's working for them. But the only difference from my perspective is this page rank, is the performance. So it's, it goes without saying that like, hmm, maybe that's important. Maybe that's important to, to rank up. And maybe not necessarily the performance, but if I click, if I'm in a, in a slow connection and I click on Peter's article and it takes 10 seconds to load, it may take even longer on a slow connection, I just go back. That's how Google knows and says, okay, you know, Peter is probably the best resource out there, but this, I'm, no, I, don't, I haven't read these articles, so I don't know if they're bad or good, but I'm sure they're great. You know, but this one loads really fast. We need to promote that because that's people need to get their content. That's four minutes. That's, that's an hour, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy your time. I'm going to keep recording. Please leave and go to the next, the next session. Please leave. Thank you all. Bye. Oh, I will keep recording. Leave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Go to the next session. Thank you, guys. Let me know how you thought. Thank you. Thank you so much, folks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to keep recording. I'm going to edit out this, this area. I'm going to wait till I'm going to probably just gonna kick everyone out too. That's what I'm going to do. And, um, and I'll keep recording and then you'll be able to follow, th follow up. Go to the next session, guys. Go to the next session. Give, give, give everybody a, uh, it really helps to have all the support. So, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. <sighs> okay. So, after, so one, after Lighthouse, you know, which is a quick and easy tool to see, like, what's, what's, how your page is performing, you'll notice that um, on, on my, Let's go to Lighthouse here. On my page, I have a, I have a performance 78 and SEO 92. If I scroll down, it tells you what's going on here. Bubble, no matter what you can do, it's gonna load all this JavaScript and it's gonna take forever. There's nothing you can do about it. The best thing you can do actually is just avoid adding more plugins. If you, the more plugins you add, the more JavaScript's gonna load up front, and the more it's gonna delay the first initial content load. So I have no plugins and it's taking, it still is a 78. Um, then you can come down and see, oh, I'm missing an alt attribute on one of these images. How did that happen? I'll have to go and, and just edit that real quick. I think it's on this custom um, HTML. I didn't add any alt tags to that. If we go here, we see here we have source, and then we have, okay, so what I need to do here is type in alt equals um, avif image. Again, you kind of want to describe the image. This is helping people that can't see, and, and so they, you want to make sure this is good. To, I'm just describing, I'm just doing an example right now. But if I go back to this thing and I rerun this report, um, I'm going to hit desktop, and oh, yeah. It's gonna, it should, that, should, that should go away. Um, so this is like a free and easy way to do your site health, your SEO, site, your, your, your site health SEO. And that's important. Um, well, 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. This is why you do this. Let's see what happened here. Okay, I made a lot of changes, so um, I remember I mentioned that earlier, like it's messing things up. But I had that canonical URL going and I like multiple ones and I have let's see here. Let's see, where is it? Uh, and the image element, which one is it? The second one doesn't have the, I must have wrote it wrong, the alt tag attribute. Let's see here. Let's see here. Inspect. Alt generic photo post. And then this one. Let's see real quick. Image. Oh, it didn't. It's not a... Oh, this is the um, deployed version. It's not the test version. That's why. So we'll have to. I can have to change that later. Um, okay, let's keep going. Now that I don't have an audience. I feel I'm like I don't need to work that hard. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's. I did the case study real quick to show you the importance of having a good performance. Now, um, Google Search Console is very important. You know, it's again, it's a free tool. And um, it's going to be your best friend in, in, in like launching and uh, just having a baseline of SEO. Um, so how to bubble. Um, I, I, I have added a domain. So we have add property. You go to add property. Then you hit um, a new domain or a URL prefix. This is going to be an easy way to do it. You can just um, add a, a bit of... Uh, Actually, a meta tag into your into your bevy. So you'll hit you put your URL here, highlevel.com. You hit continue, and then you'll say add meta tag to um, oh, to your. Oh, sorry, man, I am I'm pooped. Go to your settings, go to your SEO, and then in here you'll just paste it, in, and then that's all you need to do. Then you can deploy it um, and come back to your console, refresh, and you'll be able to. Uh, verify that you're the owner that's basically it's just kind of verifying that you're the owner if you're on cloudflare or if you have access to your dns settings you can do um the domain i did that super easy so i just typed in my name i'm on cloudflare i hit continue i logged in with cloudflare and now it, it, it tracks you know the all my subdomains you know uh, the different protocols and so it's it's a little more robust and so it's very easy if you have access to the dns settings that is so after you do that if you're verified, you're going to add a sitemap. So that URL, that you know, you see it's your it's your root domain, the, the main one that you want to use, howtobubble.com, and then sitemap.xml. You type that in here, hit submit, and then it's going to start reading your sitemap. Google can and will potentially <laughs> uh, find your sitemap on its own. But... If nobody's linking to your site, it has no way of knowing. Just because you put it in the internet, Google's not like looking for every site. It needs to have a reason to go to your site. So someone has to link to it or for some reason it has to exist somewhere. Like and then Google will find it. As it's crawling the web, it's gonna like crawl, 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 crawl and, and find its way through to your site and then boom, okay, now it has a site map. Okay, boom, we added it. If you're building a site from the get-go, you want to add this yourself. Boom, just add it. And now this is going to tell Google, hey, you should crawl this site. You know, like there's a new site map. And, and um, so, yeah, it's going to go through. When I added it, it didn't happen fast. So what I did was I went to my site map file and I just loaded it. Let me go to site map. I loaded it. And then I came back and it worked. And then I clicked it again and I said, oh, there was there was no like site map. So then I went again and I went to each one of these files and for some reason it worked. I'm not sure if that was just coincidence, but it worked. And I didn't have to do it for each one of these individual ones, interestingly enough. So, okay, so what else can you do here though? This is, seems like adding a sitemap, all this without a sitemap, not, not exactly. The next thing we can do is inspect, inspect URL. And why would I wanna do that? Well, you kinda of wanna, it'd be nice to see exactly what Google sees. What does Google see when they come to my page? And that's what you can do when you inspect the URL. So let's see, let's do our, um, our FAQ page. I'm gonna type in how to bubble.com slash uh, FAQ. Oof, you're achieving the, the information. Let's see, let's view the crawled page. Boom, and this is the code that 
is actually being seen by Bubble, by Google. Oof, it's a hard one. And you can no you notice that all these scripts are here. These are all these scripts are, are inserted um, by Bubble, you know, and and your different plugins and your different code. It's kind of a mess. And it's a lot. It's a lot before it even begins to get to the body of your app, which is, uh, let's see here. I think I may have passed it. Script. Uh, let's see here. Let's come, can I command F here? Body. 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 Boom. Head. So this is the end of your head at 326. Boom. So just here is where your your my, my page starts. So all of this comes before. It's a lot. It doesn't really give any you it doesn't really help anything. So that's costing resources for, for Google to read. Now, what are you gonna do about it? Well, that's where Coalius can help out. Coalius has SEO catching. So I've, I've, I've set up co-aliasing on a page called, on my, um, my blog site. And you'll see here, when crawlers uh, visit blog, catch, catch this site. So it's gonna keep it in, um, in like memory essentially. And so when, and when Google, the crawler comes, it's gonna load this HTML file that co has created for me and um, show that first to them. And now I'm going to show you real quick the difference. So if I go now to, uh, let's see here. Oh, no. Yeah, all. Um, how to bubble, how to bubble dot com slash blog. And we go to view cold page. Whoa. Whoa, look at this, look at this. That's it. That's it. And you can see here, SEO catch by Coelius. And this, as we get to the, we get into the, we get up all the, our, our, our um, meta tags, our style sheet, our canonical URL. It's all there, it's easy to see. It's like, oh, yeah, even a human could do this, which is the point. It's supposed to look, it's supposed to be easy to read. And if we type in, let's type in, uh, and F, uh, body. Mm. Yeah, that's the end of our head. This is this is where it's the things. All the way up here, we're starting. We're starting right here. Our site starts. So this is all it gets. It just essentially just gets our tags that we needed to see. That's a lot better and a lot faster for the crawls to get to. Again, when you have a ton of, when you have a lot of URLs, this adds up. And um, when you want to make sure that Google is getting the right stuff fast, this makes a difference. So that's that's one thing to note why you would use console. I mean, I'm using Coelius here to accomplish this, but it's this is the sort of detail you can get from using the console. And this is a free tool, and this is done by Google, the people that are actually crawling your site. So it's important uh, for that reason. You can also see here, like, you know, how many people, how often people come in your site, the performance for each link. I don't have anything because I just, I made mean, this a demo site. It just doesn't exist on the internet really yet. But you can see how many people are clicking, how many people are, like, clicking through after they see it. You know, and what's your average position in the in the SERPs? You know, um, among other things like your your uh, your vitals. Um, again, this it happens after a good amount of time. Just things to make sure your site's doing good. And once you're actually once you're being uh, tracked or like verified, Google will, like send you an email saying, "Hey, you're not doing well right now. Like you gotta fix this thing. You know, because you're you're ranking down or whatever." So this is gonna be great. It's just should be standard procedure to have this done on any site because um, it's just going to make sure that you're doing well um, on a basic level, you know, without like marketing strategy or, or super SEO strategy, no content strategy. This is about 
making sure your site is just working to be crawled and to be indexed appropriately. Um, you can see, that I don't have any pages being indexed yet, but um, let's see if I go to one of my other sites here. Uh, I got some pages being indexed. I had some traffic here. It's not a, I, this isn't launched yet either, so. Okay, so Search Console in a nutshell. That, there's a lot more to do, but that's basically what you need to know. I thought about SEO caching this uh, with Coelius um, and the big SEO tools. This is when you start, when you, start, when you wanna start getting into strategy, you wanna start seeing, okay, I made an article, I published uh, like four articles this month. What happened to my traffic? Am I, am, am I appearing in Google when people search, you know? And so when I search how to bubble, is, is my site coming up and are people clicking on my links? And, and if they are, which ones are they clicking? For what reason, you know? Like, and okay, let me try a new strategy. I'm gonna put different keywords in and then you wanna track how the performance of that goes. These basic, big SEO tools are gonna to help you with that. Now these tools are expensive. So that's why I started this whole uh, this whole webinar and this whole thing is because I, I started a tool called roseo.io and um, I think that we don't you don't need to spend $200 a month for you know basic information about your site. Especially with Google Console, you, you this is everything you need. But maybe you just don't want to have to spend the effort. So that's why I built Roseo.io. And it's just like $5 at a time, you get the report you need and um, you're good to go. Right now it's in waitlist. Feel free to go and sign up for the waitlist if you want. You can go to Roseo.io, just showing off my scores here. And um, sign up for the waitlist. You get a report with your health, site health, the errors that you're seeing. This is a consolidated view of, of some of the errors that appear here. More or less the things that you actually need to fix. There's a, you know, sometimes there's a lot of things here that may not be worth spending your time. This is gonna be actual difference making. Uh, so we're gonna show you your site health, the backlinks, like you know, are big people showing or some obscure like bad site pointing to me? I wanna know. How's my traffic doing? Am I increasing my traffic? And then how are my keywords doing? Am I ranking for this? Am I ranking for how to bubble or not? You know, So it's kind of uh, a basic report, easy to do, and you don't have to spend $100, $200 a month and learn how to use a really complicated tool, which is designed for SEO creatives and artists. Um, yeah, but for now it's on the wait list. Okay. And yeah. I recommend you use less plugins. The fewer plugins you, yeah, fewer plugins. <laughs> I recommend fewer plugins. Every plugin you add, it's gonna, it may have, may need to pull a package for it to run. So like it has this code and it says, uh, oh, I need to use this package, this which is more code, and it's gonna download that every time it's needed. So bubble, is gonna add it to your, um, uh, let's see here, what's network? It's gonna, it's gonna load it after it runs its first JavaScript and it's gonna actually at the same time. And if you're loading all these packages at the same time, it's gonna slow it down. So the less plugins, the better, to be honest. Unless you can guarantee that this plugin is small and doesn't, require external packages and that's not easy to do really to determine unless they're telling you so you could maybe ask the developer you know but they they may not even they may say yes and not even realize that they are using external packages um most likely if it's a servo plugin it may it probably using some sort of external package some like charts plugins and pdf plugins those are big and they're going to require like third party um packages and it's going to slow your app down so if you do need the plugin like obviously if you need this feature you know put it on a different page you have your home page your next page which is just like your marketing site your landing page and your login page you don't need the pdf plugin on that page in fact you may not even need it on your app page so maybe when you want to need to generate a pdf you generate the information and then you load a new page which has the pdf button on it and the element for that plugin. So then that plugin will only be loaded when they go to the PDF page. Oh, so that's crucial. Then uh, Framer. 
So this is not possible with Bubble. 97% performance is not possible with Bubble. This is only possible with a site like Framer. Why? Not because it's a better tool, but it's because they are catching every, they're, they're, they're basically statically generating my site and sending it all at once. There's nothing that needs to load after it arrives. You know, Bubble, a Bubble app, you, you ask, you say, hey, how to Bubble.com, Bubble sends you the file and says, oh, I need all this JavaScript, I need all this code for me to show you the page. Sites like, like Framer, who statically generate your content, they, 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 they design, the, they, they, they generate or render the page and then send you that page. And so it just loads real fast. Everything's there. It's already, the, everything you need is already there when you make the request. So the, the thing that's slowing my page down right now, why it's not 100, is because I have this big image, Roseo Gardens, and I, I, haven't mod I haven't uploaded it as an ABIF. I bet if I do that, I can, I can get this down. I'm pretty confident. And so like, we'll see that. So properly sized images, oh, yep. It's 267 kilobytes. I'm, I could probably get. I say like I could probably save 162 by, by using a more um, compressed version of this image, and then I could have. Let's say I want to have like, I want to you know I want to you want to click it and see, the full view. Well then then I can show, the the high resolution version. So when I click it, hey hey, yeah, yeah, load the high resolution version so that everyone can read it. But on the landing page, show the low-resolution compressed one. We don't need to be the highest quality. It just needs to look good enough. You know, I don't want to be able to see pixels on it. That's not, that doesn't look good. But you don't need, there's, it doesn't need to be the highest quality image when it's not actually being assessed for that. So I'm going to do that and, and uh, get back to you guys on that. And uh, yeah, go to the bubble manual. Check out the SEO. Start there. Then, then go to the bubble um, SEO, um, like well, developer.google.com slash search on docs. Everything you need to know about SEO, I mean, in terms of technical and how it works with Google, is on this page. Everything. It's, it's, we got our site maps, the robots, how crawlers work, canonicalization, the JavaScript. Um, you know, I could have just opened this up and read through it, I think, and that maybe would have got through this faster. Uh, I, I've been linking to the Flusk article that I helped for uh, for image optimization, and uh, and then there's a little cool blog about um, canonical tags from Ahrefs. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. Sorry, this went on for so long. Uh, I definitely shouldn't have taken my time in the beginning. Um, maybe I'll do it again with an abridged version, uh, or just the just the bubble parts. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Find me on Twitter, uh, Facundo Lucci, F-A-C-U-N-D-O-L-U-C-C-I. Check out roseo.io. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me if you think there's something you want. Tell me if you want something else. Um, yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to hear it. Um, and I'm super proud of these little animations. All right. Thank you. See y'all.